Hello Nidorinars and Nidorinos and welcome to Vilestone City where today the Vilestone Combat are hosting the Viridian Fisher and both of these sides have a lot riding on this because they need the victories to still keep their chances of making the trials in four weeks alive. Now Viridian Fisher are going to start out with their pseudo-legendary Garchomp and Golo whereas Toxicroak and Mayan Shell are going to start out for the Vilestone Combat and Mayan Shell has got that speed advantage for the combat so it's going to be going first here and it's going to start off with a Thunder Wave which won't affect Golo because the Viridian Fissure are all immune to electric type attacks, which will open the door for Garchomp to go with a Bug Bite. Targeting Mayan Shell with that move, it doesn't do a great deal of damage as it's not very effective though, but it will steal Mayan Shell's Leopard Berry and eat it right in front of it there. Now Toxicroak with its opportunity is going to go for its first move, and it's going to go with a Super Pell which won't affect Golo because it's part Ghost and it is immune to fighting the normal type attacks. Now Golok's going to go with an Earthquake, this is going to hit everybody on the field and it's going to get a stab boost because it is a ground type move and it did huge damage to the Vileson combat, it actually eliminated Toxicroak and my Shell just held on. This is a massive start for the matchup for the Viridian Fissure, Surfetch now comes out for the Vileson combat. Now as always this is a 6 on 6 metronome battle and if we hit that 20 minute time limit we will go into single battle overtime, but if this keeps up we won't even get close. And now we have my answer. Using a memento, it's taken itself out of the matchup, focusing that memento onto Garchomp. So it's going to lower Garchomp's attack and special attack. This could be a good play. I've never seen this benefit aside, but you have to wonder if you're lowering the offensive abilities of a pseudo legendary, maybe it can benefit your side as Garchomp goes with a tail slap. It hits Surfetch three times so far, and it gets three hits, but it did very minimal damage each time. Yeah, Surfetch is going for its first move of the matchup, and it's going to go with a headbutt. Clearly going for Garchomp, because that would not affect Golok, and it takes Garchomp down into the yellow. Now Golok, looking to follow up that impressive Earthquake, it's going to go with a Feather Dance. So it's not going to do any physical damage. Instead though, it is going to lower the attack stat of Surfetch, and that attack stat of Surfetch is 135, so it is massive. It is good to lower that as Polyrath now comes onto the field. For the Vilestone combat now, Polyrath has that water fighting typing. As Garchomp has the speed advantage on the field now that Mian Shell is off. And a Leaf Tornado coming from Garchomp. And it's going to go for Polyrath. And it, although super effective, did not do a great deal of damage. It has lowered Polyrath's accuracy. But that's where that memento is coming to benefit the Vilestone combat. Because you've taken away that power from Garchomp. Now Swift won't affect Golok, but it will do damage to Garchomp. Surfetch looking to follow it up. It's going to go with a Fury attack. But Garchomp avoids that attack. Now Golok setting up its turn. Going with the Jaw Lock. And it's not very effective on Surfetch now. Vostone Combat are only two games, two wins out of being in the top eight. They need this victory. We have four rounds left. So Viridian Fissure at three. So neither side wants to lose as we get a Frenzy Plant coming from Garchomp. Targeting Surfetch here. Takes Surfetch down into the yellow. Much better hit than what it did to Polyrath. Polyrath's gonna go with a Pulti Glass. And it's gonna hit Golok. This is gonna be super effective. It's gonna use its own Leopard Bear against it. And a huge hit onto Golok there. Super effective taking it down into the red. Golok could be finished off by Surfetch here. Who's gonna go with the Luster Purge. Except it looks like it's gonna target Garchomp with this attack. And Garchomp holds on, barely, but it is hanging in there. Both Viridian and Fisher Pokemon are in the thread as we get an Ice Beam coming from Golurk. And it's going to target Surfetch with this move, and Surfetch is frozen solid, and it is in the red, hot, hanging in there, but an easy target for the Viridian Fisher. Now Garchomp has to recharge after that last turn, which will give Polyrath the opportunity, and goes with a Floral Healing. This is terrible for the Vileston Combat. Because Polyrath has just restored the health of Garchomp. Garchomp being taken back up into the green there thanks to the combat. The Surfetch is still frozen solid. Golek has the opportunity to capitalize now. And it's going to go with the Cross Poison. Targets Polyrath with that move. Polyrath still in the green though. But as I said, the Viridian Fisher are three games out of making the top eight at the moment. We have four games left. So there's still hope for both teams here, as we're going to get a Fissure from Garchomp, but Surfetch avoids that attack, even though it's frozen. Tarshot now coming from Polyrath, 
but Golok avoids that attack and Surfetched has not thawed out yet. This has actually happened to Surfetched before where it was frozen for about 10 turns and then illuminated as Golok goes with a supersonic and it's going to confuse Surfetched. Although I think Surfetched is quite unaware of this because it is still frozen solid. Now Viridian Fisher have been playing spoilers to a few teams. They did beat the Spike McDevils last week. And that prevented the Spike McDevils from inching their way into the 8, which they've been trying to do all season. As we get a mud slap from Garchomp taking Polyrath down into the yellow and also lowering Polyrath's accuracy. Now Polyrath is going to go with the tackle, clearly going to go for Garchomp because again this would not hit Golurk. Taking Garchomp down into the yellow with a critical hit and Surfetched is still <laughs> frozen solid, unbelievable. Now Golurk is going to go with the Accupressure so not going for an offensive move, instead it's going to benefit Garchomp here as Garchomp has its Defense. Now guard jump with its chance. Goes with a dragon breath. It's gonna get that stab boost. So it is a dragon type. And it's gonna finish off Surfetch. So Surfetch has been eliminated, and this is a common place for Surfetch to be frozen and taken out by opposing teams. But the Viridian Fisher have taken out three of the Vilestone Combat Pokemon already. As a flying press from Polyrath won't affect Golurk. Again, Golurk is immune to normal and fighting type moves, but a blaze kick will come from Golurk. Going straight for Polyrath here. Now, it's not very effective due to Polyrath's water typing. Bilestone Combat send out Komoho, their own pseudo legendary, trying to match it up to Garchomp here. So we have two dragon types on the field at the moment. Garchomp has the speed advantage over Komoho though. And it's going to go with a Tailwind, so it's actually going to give a boost now. To Golo, Golo will have that Tailwind making it a faster Pokemon. Golo's gonna go with the Astonish. It targets Polyrath with that attack. Polyrath gets taken down into the red. A very good hit with that Astonish from Golo. Sunny Day being set up by Komo, so if anyone goes for a Solar Beam or a Solar Blade, it will not take two turns to charge up. It will hit on the very first turn. Now Polyrath with its chance. It's gonna go with the Defog. And it targets Garchomp with that Defog. So Garchomp has its evasiveness lowered there. Garchomp now. It's gonna go with the Circle Throw. Polyrath avoids that attack, it would have been sent back to the bench if it wasn't eliminated. Golok's gonna go with the Fusion Bolt. If this targets Polyrath, you have to think it'll get the job done. And Polyrath is eliminated. Those are the first four Pokemon of this matchup that have been eliminated. We're eliminated from the Vilestone combat. Now the combat are fighting all odds at the moment. They are still yet to get an elimination on the Viridian Fissure. Now Worry Seed thrown from Komo onto Garchomp will prevent Garchomp from going to sleep. Now that it's got that Insomnia ability. Komo needs to take advantage of its super legendary status as Persimian comes out as the last Pokemon for the Vilestone combat. We're not even 10 minutes into this matchup though, and there are only two Pokemon left for the combat. As we get a pin missile coming from Garchomp, and Garchomp has been doing very well to stick around in this battle, as it's had its stats lowered so severely. It's hit Komo three times with that pin missile. There's four. Now it's not very effective, it didn't do much damage. But Golok's gonna look to follow up, and even Golok, who's been hanging on by a thread for so long, is gonna go with a Vine Whip. Welcoming Persimian to the field. Gets that critical hit just to Add extra insult to injury. Now Komo with its opportunity. Goes with a Harden, so Komo again not going for an offensive move. It's going to boost its defense here. Simeon. Goes with the Aqua Ring, so Simeon's going to restore its health in between turns. Both Komo and Persimian are still in the green. So Garchomp and Golok are very vulnerable at the moment. The Vilestone Combat have not taken any advantages that they've had as we get a Nightshade coming from Garchomp. Going for Komo and Komo takes a decent hit there from its fellow pseudo legendary. Golok has the chance to follow it up too. And it's actually going to go for a Soul Blade, so it's going to absorb the light and connect on this turn. 
Here comes that Solar Blade. Looks like it's going to go for Komaru as well. Komaru gets taken down into the yellow, even though that move wasn't very effective. Now Komaru is going to respond, and it's going to go with an Energy Ball, so this should be super effective on the ground types, but it goes for Garchomp, so it's not as effective due to its Dragon Time, but it gets it in the red. Pissimian could get an elimination here. It's going to go with a Gyro Ball. It targets Golok there, and Golok has been taken down. The Boston and Komaru have gotten their first elimination of this matchup 10 minutes in. A much needed hit as that Aqua Ring restores the health of Pissimian. So we're going to have a third Pokemon now coming out for the Viridian Fissure. And it's Seismitoad. Seismitoad is one of the few Pokemon so far this season not to get an elimination at all in a battle. We'll see if today can be that first one. Now Garchomp's going to go with the Zing Zap. It continues to target Komaru now. That move was not very effective. But Komaru is actually flinched. So it's not going to go for a move this turn. Komaru doing very poor so far as we get a slack off from Pissimian. So it's going to restore its health. And Seismitoad could capitalize on this. Pissimian getting itself back to 100%. Seismitoad is going to go with the Vital Throw. It looks like it's going to target Pissimian with that hit. And Seismitoad's Poison Touch is also going to leave Pissimian poisoned. This is the first time we've seen that come into effect for Seismitoad this season. This is what we need Seismitoad to do is that harsh sunlight does leave the field. Pissimian restores its health with the Aqua Ring and then it loses its health thanks to that poisoning. So it'll be a very up and down time in between turns for Pissimian. Now Garchomp's still holding on in this battle. He's going to go with another Pin Missile. This time it goes for Pissimian, much more effective than what it was on Komaru, getting a critical hit on that first hit. And it only gets two hits. Now Komaru needs to do something, it's still yet to do anything really. And this time it's going to go for a Thundershock, which doesn't affect Garchomp again. The ground types are immune to electric attacks. And we get an Octazooka coming from Pissimian. Now this will hit Garchomp, and Garchomp has been finished off by the fighting type. So Garchomp is eliminated. Seismitoad though, still has its chance to capitalize and goes with a howl. So Seismitoad's gonna boost its attack stat here. As again, Pissimian restores its health with the Aqua Ring and it loses its health thanks to that poison touch from Seismitoad. Fourth Pokemon now is coming out for the Viridian Fissure. As the Volstein come back, trying to make their way back into this, and it's Sandaconda who comes out. You know, Komaru has that speed advantage. This is what the Volstein come back have needed all battle. And it goes with the disarming voice. This is going to hit both Sandaconda and Seismitoad. Now, it's not very effective. Well, it doesn't do a great deal of damage. And that first impression from Pissimian is going to fail. Seismitoad now has its chance, and it's going to go with the conversion too, so it's going to change its typing based on Komaru. And Seismitoad now becomes a fire type. And Sandicon is going to go with the Petal Blizzard. Now that hits everybody on the field. Thankfully, Seismitoad has its typing changed, otherwise, it probably would have been eliminated by its own teammate there. And we have Persimian and Komaru both down in the yellow. So that advantage is heavily still on the side of the Viridian Fissure. They still have two Pokemon we've not seen come out onto this battlefield. Komaru is going to go with the Poison Tail. Going for Seismitoad there, Seismitoad takes that hit quite well. Simeon goes with the Teeter Dance, so it's going to confuse everybody on the battlefield, including its own teammate, Komaru. This could be a huge hindrance to the last in combat. If Sandaconda and Seismitoad can't attack, it's going to benefit the combat greatly. Seismitoad, first example of that, hits itself in its confusion. Sandaconda, no better luck, has also done damage to itself thanks to that confusion. There's that poison aqua ring confusion for Pissimian as it gets taken down into the red by that poisoning. Now Komaru needs to shake its confusion off for the combat, and it does! The only one to do so successfully so far. 
And it's going to go with a haze, so it doesn't go for the offensive move and capitalize. Instead, it eliminates all stat changes from the matchup. Basimian goes with the false swipe and move renowned with Shiny Hunters. I've said it before, it is a fantastic move when Shiny Hunting. Now, Seismitoad again doesn't shake off its confusion and almost eliminates itself, but is just hanging on it there. The Sandaconda does shake its confusion. And it goes with a lick. This could leave somebody paralyzed. Targeting combo over there doesn't do a great deal of damage and doesn't leave it paralyzed. And again, here's that health restored by Basimian getting into the yellow, but that poisoning takes it straight back down into the red. Combo again with that confusion. And again, it shakes it off. This is fantastic for the combat. Goes with the ice shard. Targeting Seismitoad, this will finish it off. So Seismitoad has been eliminated. That's three Pokemon down now for the Viridian Fissure. The Wild Stink have done their best to try and make it back in this battle as Persimian can focus solely on Sandaconda and it goes with a splash. So nothing's going to happen. Now a water type move is fantastic if it was to t actually do damage to Sandaconda. But Sandaconda snapped out of its confusion. It goes with the Reflect type. And it's going to copy the typing of Komaru, so Sandaconda is now a dragon fighting type. Simeon's still holding on. Even with that poisoning continuing to afflict damage. The fifth Pokemon now for the Viridian Fish is coming out. It's going to be Mudsdale. So Mudsdale is at full strength, and Sandaconda is still in the green. Now Komaru. Continuing to be confused, and this time it's actually done damage to itself, taking itself down into the red. This is terrible for the Vilestone combat. Simeon's going to go with the Solar Blade. It's going to take a turn for it to charge up so that Sunny Day is no longer in effect. This would have been a brilliant move for the Vilestone combat to use as we get our three-minute warning. Sandaconda is going to go with the Fire Spin. It's going to target Persimian, so Persimian won't finish that Solar Blade. It is eliminated. Como is the last remaining Pokemon, and Mudstail has the opportunity now. And it's going to go with a Tackle. And that is it. The battle finishes. Mudstail connects on the pseudo-legendary with a Tackle and gets the victory for the Rudian Fissure. That is the third win in a row for the ground types. A fantastic showing by them today. Starting off with that Earthquake in the very first turn by Golurk. And they, Golurk and Garchomp took out the first four Pokemon. That Memento, by my answer, was almost a very good play with weakening Garchomp. But Garchomp held on in this battle for so long. You have to think it probably wasn't worth it in the end. So the Viridian Fissure getting their third win in a row. They want to try and get their fourth next week. And they're going to be hosting in Viridian City the Maliage Rackinids. That'll be a huge challenge for the Viridian Fissure. But they have gotten some big upsets so far this season. So if they could beat the Melee Dragons and keep their hopes alive to try and make the Grand Trials. After there's only three games left, they need those victories. I look forward to that. Whereas the Vilestone Combat lose today, and that is slowing down their momentum. Much needed momentum. But they're traveling to Snowpoint City next week to face the Snowpoint Frost. They're going to have the type advantage, and the Snowpoint Frost have had a very poor season. But they've been playing spoiler to a number of teams trying to get into the Trials as well. So we'll see if the Vilestone Combat can redeem themselves. But until that time, Nidorinos, Nidorinos, thank you so much for watching. Let us know in the comments below who you thought was the best on field today. If you enjoyed what you saw, leave a like, share, subscribe, but more importantly, always remember, you are awesome, and I will speak to you next time.